This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV in association with MTK Global via Zoom. I'm joined in the bubble by Bob Arum. Um, I'm sure you're used to the bubble now, uh, had many shows. Um, how's it all been, Bob, the experience so far? Uh, you know, funny enough, it is very wearing. You know, you get, I get here in the early in the morning, like I got here eight o'clock in the morning, uh, get tested. Uh, by one o'clock, they can tell me that I'm negative. So I stay in my room for until two o'clock and then come down to the office here that Top Rank maintains at the convention area. Uh, so it's, it, it really, it's a full day. It goes from, I leave the house at 7.30 in the morning to get to the MGM and I don't get home until 8.30, uh, 8.45 in the evening. So it's a long day. Well, someone who hasn't tested negative, uh, unfortunately for Jamal Herring, one of the unluckiest guys around at the moment, uh, two uh, tests come back positive. Uh, have you spoke much to Jarrell, Bob? Well, I haven't talked to him, but the guys have talked to him. Uh, it was unfortunate because now the doctors tell us, you learn something every day, that if you had coronavirus and if you no longer have it, there may be some particles that are not contagious that that still surround you and give you a positive test so unfortunately once that happens he's out under the rules of the protocol unfair that though that was we spoke to the opponent uh, right now we are rescheduling the fight for the second week of uh, August okay of course, uh, Jamel Herring and Carl Frampton have been heavily linked with the fight. We understand also that Carl uh, could be out in Belfast uh, around the same time, August, I believe. And that is correct, Carl, August 15th. From He, he and uh, Mick Conlon are on the same card. Uh, you know, we can't bring them over here to fight because of the travel ban. Uh, so uh, MTK is putting their fights on uh, in Belfast. Also, any news on Josh Taylor? Of course, Frank Warren was going to have him out uh, in conjunction with yourself. Well, you know, we, we keep pulling for Josh Taylor, this thing to, I'd love Josh to come over here and fight. Uh, but uh, if um, uh, that's not possible, we're going to have to give Josh a fight, uh, maybe August or September in the UK. And then uh, uh, our plan was at the end of the year uh, to do uh, the Taylor uh, Ramirez unification fight in the 140 pound division. Uh, so let's see, I mean, you know, we keep making plans and the plans uh, disappear because we have no control over this virus. Bob, of course, you also had plans uh, for Jerome Miller. Very disappointing that uh, his tests come back positive again, so he didn't box under you at all. Um, just to tell me your initial thoughts on, on when you first heard about it, Bob. Well, you know, I was outraged, and I'm still outraged, because a fighter taking performance-enhancing drugs is really could be accused of attempted murder. I mean, it's just something that is beyond the pale. If you take performance-enhancing drugs as a track and field person, I mean, that's bad because you're cheating, but at least it's not, not life-threatening. If you have uh, performance-enhancing drugs in your system, you can cause damage to your opponent, which wouldn't be possible if you were clean. So I don't countenance uh, anything with performance enhancing drugs. And I blame the fighter. Uh, he can't keep blaming the people around him like he's an innocent guy and just takes what they give him. I mean, that, that was his uh, plea uh, in New York when he was uh, supposed to fight Fury. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, Joshua, 
but it certainly no longer has any viability, at least as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, of course, he, he popped for Peds before, and I'm sure he would have reassured you that this situation wouldn't have come up again. Is that what he, he said to you? He certainly did started? before we signed him. We, he promised that he would have nutritionists check everything that went into his body, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then this happened. Now, again, like everybody, he's entitled to be heard. And he'll, if he chooses, will go before the Nevada Athletic Commission, which has jurisdiction, uh, and we'll see what happens. But uh, your position is that he'll never box under you again, Bob? Right. I don't want to be involved. Okay. No matter how it comes out. Okay. All right. We've learned that uh, we have a, a proposed date for the trilogy between Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder, uh, middle of December. Is that uh, accurate, Bob? That is accurate. Uh, together with PBC, we checked our distributors, uh, theirs being uh, Fox and ours being ESPN. And both uh, companies said that was the marvelous date. Uh, no college football games, nothing to interfere, uh, smooth sailing. And now we're hoping against hope that we could do that fight uh, in uh, Allegiant Stadium here in Las Vegas, which is where the uh, uh, Las Vegas Raiders football team played. It's a new $2 billion state-of-the-art stadium. Uh, it seats 65,000 people in the stands, maybe another five or 6,000 on the grounds. Uh, and we hope to get permission to do it for 20 to 25,000 spectators. Are you looking at uh, Lomachenko Lopez to be at the same location? No, that Lomachenko Lopez, uh, I really think uh, that uh, uh, we would look to stage it in a smaller facility and set it up for maybe uh, 2,000 special fans who will we'll give a meal to, drinks and everything, uh, and, and get uh, some people in there. We picked October for the date for that fight, October 3rd. Of course, we hope the governor at that point will allow uh, these limited number of spectator events to take place in Nevada. Okay, so th that smallish arena for 2,000 people would again be in Vegas that fight though? Still. Yeah, in Vegas. we're staying in Vegas because our bubble is here. And even if, fight, even if spectators will be allowed, uh, we want to keep the fighters in the bubble so we make sure that they're coronavirus free when they enter the ring. Okay, sounds good. In terms of uh, Fury Wilder Free, so Las Vegas is something you've outlined there. There's no other location options on the car at, uh, cars at the moment, Bob? Well, yeah, we are looking at Macau because they were very interested. And the question is whether the necessary procedures will be in effect in Macau such as border crossing and everything uh, before they will allow uh, a, a, a stadium full of spectators or an arena. Uh, and uh, we just don't know if we'll be able to get the all clear uh, in Macau for December 19th. If we would, it would be very, very uh, good type of venue because they have six major uh, casino resort companies uh, in uh, Macau, and all six of them have agreed uh, to chip in and defray the costs of the fight. But again, they, so many of these things are out of my hands. I mean, they are not normal things that uh, promoters, particularly boxing promoters, have been used to. So we'll see. Yeah, if Macau steps up to the plate, if they get the necessary clearances from the government, 
then Macau, you know, they, we do the fight on the 20th of December in Macau, which is equivalent of the 19th uh, in uh, the United States. Okay. Saw some reports today that uh, Eddie Hearn said Joshua Pulev could be on a boat. Thoughts on that, Bob? Well, Eddie Hearn, I mean, he can't stop talking. Maybe it could be on a boat. Maybe it could be on a plane. Maybe it could be on a train. Whatever it is, a rocket ship, who knows? I mean, right now, like all of us, Eddie is stuck as to where to put that fight. It's a very good fight, very interesting fight. But it's very, very hard to do it without spectating. Maybe he do it, does it in Royal Albert Hall for a thousand spectators to get a special meal or something. He'll figure it out. We'll help him figure it out. But I know what he's going through. I mean, and if it pleases him uh, to uh, uh, spout off like he thinks he's Dr. Seuss, uh, you want your, hair, your, your green eggs and ham on a plane or a train or a boat, you know, who, he doesn't hurt anybody doing that. And you're still adamant, Bob, that uh, Kubrat Pulev knocks Anthony Joshua out 100% on that? Well, there's nothing 100%. I mean, that's ludicrous. But I think he has a real good chance to beat him and knock him out. Yeah, I, I like him. I know that Joshua will go off a pretty large favorite. And I usually don't bet on boxing matches. But believe me, I'll place a good bet on that one. Any updates on uh, Terence Crawford, Bob, please? Well, we're, we're, we're looking for a major Terence Crawford fight uh, in November. And uh, everybody will have to be, be patient. But hopefully, within the next 10 days, we can announce what we have. I'm very, very optimistic that uh, Terence will be fighting in November. Could that be in the Middle East, Bob? No comment. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, listen, Bob, listen, um, yeah, thanks for taking the time out today. And uh, best of luck with the rest of the shows. And I uh, look forward to that Crawford announcement, okay? Yeah, well, it's going to be a big announcement, hopefully. Uh, so we're on tender hooks because, again, uh, a lot of the questions uh, really zero in on can there be crowds, how many in the crowd, all of those issues that we've never dealt with before. Not Eddie Hearns, not Frank Warren, not me, not Al Heyman. We're all in uh, a different universe, so to speak. But we'll make it out. It will. This will all be over one day. And we'll be back to normal, dissing each other. <laughs> we hope so. Bob Aram, thank you very much for talking to IFL. Nice, nice talking to you. Uh, yeah, same here. We'll catch up soon. Thank you, Bob.